So we're going to go through the right nostril, through the right side of the nasal cavity, and we're going to advance posteriorly, not up, posteriorly. You can see it kind of pushing through the septum there, and we're going to help direct it because this septum has a hole in it, which is not normal. Oh. <laughs> not going in. Welcome back to the anatomy lab, everyone. If any of you have ever been tested for COVID-19, you may have been tested with this. The brain swab is what many of my patients like to nickname it, but this is called the nasopharyngeal swab. And you'd be surprised how many people are worried about this getting close to the brain. So today's video, we're gonna talk about that. Is it even possible? How close does it get? We're gonna actually show you on a cadaver and show you how far back this swab will get. And for good measure, we're gonna do it on Justin as well. And he's super excited about it. No, I'm not. He is. So let's get to this. Now to fully appreciate the brain swab or the nasopharyngeal swab, we need to go over some relevant anatomy and we have an awesome dissection to show you. This is a sagittal section or a sagittal cut, which divides the body into right and left sides. And students who learn anatomy, these sagittal sections are invaluable to help them learn internal structures, which is gonna help us with our story, especially because we can see the brain and its relationship to these passageways that we need to talk about. This passageway here is called the pharynx, which is a fancy pants name for the word throat. If I jump back over to here, this is called the nasal cavity. And one structure that a lot of you have heard about before that I'm pulling up here is called the nasal septum. That divides the nasal cavity into right and left sides. And we're obviously gonna go into one side or the other when we do the nasopharyngeal swab. But just take a look closely here. You can see we cut that edge so you could see this right side of the nasal cavity. Of note, this structure here is called a turbinate, which helps to moisturize and warm air as you breathe it in, because your lungs are little princess tissues that only like warm and moist air. But just jump back a little further. Remember, this whole region was called the pharynx. But right there, specifically behind the nasal cavity, they call it the nasopharynx. And this is where we need to get to for the nasopharyngeal or the brain swab. So. Let's go ahead and try this. So now that I am equipped with the nasopharyngeal swab, we can proceed with the procedure. So we're gonna go through the right nostril, through the right side of the nasal cavity, and we're gonna advance posteriorly, not up, posteriorly. You can see it kind of pushing through the septum there, and we're gonna help direct it because this septum has a hole in it, which is not normal. And now we're all the way back to the nasopharynx, which they often even recommend doing a little twist here, which Justin's gonna be really excited about. But that gives you guys an idea. Is the distance pretty far? Yeah, that's quite remarkable. And you get an idea why some people don't love the procedure, but is there any worry for the brain tissue? Obviously, absolutely not. As you can see, the swab and the distance and the proximity of the brain, plus all that bony protection that you have for these bones that come all the way anteriorly. And if even somebody messed up and went the complete wrong direction, you'd run into a bony plate that wouldn't allow you to get close to the brain. Of note though, kind of a cool factoid, you can see this is the sphenoidal sinus and this is the pituitary gland right here. They will do surgery on the pituitary gland through the nasal cavity like so, but they have to bore through or drill through the bone to get there. Keyword, bore and drill through. So obviously again, it takes some work to get to the brain tissue. And so Justin should feel very, very confident that he's going to be safe during the procedure that we're about to perform on him. Okay, Justin, so you know, based on the anatomy presentation, there is nothing to worry about, right? 
Assuming you actually know what you're talking about, yes, then... Okay. Assuming I know... Of course I know what I'm talking about. Let's okay. just, let's just do this. Let's just do this. <laughs> okay, you know what? I even brought Jeffrey for moral support. So here he is. Go ahead and pull the mask down. Go ahead. And maybe relax a little bit. Whatever, man. Just stay. Okay, here we go. Do I hold my breath or something? Yeah, just be quiet. Oh. <laughs> Not going in. <laughs> oh. By the way, this is the same swab I used on the cadaver. And Seriously? There oh, we oh. go. <laughs> <laughs> God. Dude, I, can, I can taste that. Yeah, you know, well, that's good news, you know, because you can still <sighs> taste and smell. I don't have COVID. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys saw it. Justin <sighs> survived. So there you have it, everybody. The COVID swab, your brain is safe. And just to be clear, I didn't use the same swab on the cadaver that I used on Justin. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, that would have been horrible and mean and a little bit barbaric, but on a more serious note, everyone, we want to say thank you to those who donate their bodies to science. We would not be able to educate people in anatomical awesomeness. All of the students that come through here in our lab in person on a weekly basis are better off for it. And now we're able to educate people on our social platforms. And so again, we are super grateful for those who donate their bodies to science. Please uh, put your comments below, questions. We love to hear from you guys. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, and stay safe out there.